Good morning, and welcome to our beautiful service of worship this morning. It's a very special uh, third Sunday of Advent. We're glad that you're here, whether you're a first-time visitor or a long-time member. And uh, we're so excited to be gathered and worshiping our God together. And, and as you can tell, we've got, uh, we've got a lot happening up front, and there's going to be a lot more as the service uh, gets going. But uh, we are just so excited, whether you're, uh, you're here to see your kiddos in our, in our annual Christmas pageant, or uh, you're just here to worship God, we're glad that you're here. Well, we begin. Uh, if you're sitting near the center aisle, you may be sitting on or near a clipboard. If you would uh, grab a hold of that clipboard and fill the information out there and send it on down the pew. And as it gets to you, if you don't recognize a name or two on that list, make sure you change that by the end of our service and introduce yourself to the folks that you're worshiping God with on this beautiful and chilly uh, December morning. We, uh, we also uh, want to encourage if you have a smartphone and uh, a Facebook account, you can uh, click on your Facebook app, click the check-in button at the top there and uh, find the Brighton United Methodist Church and let everybody on your Facebook uh, list know that you are worshiping God with us here on this uh, Sunday morning. We're so grateful uh, for all of your help in getting the word out about how marvelous it is to be uh, to gather here at uh, at Brighton United Methodist Church. And of course, we love those uh, we love those uh, p- uh, pictures of the pageant. So if you're uh, if you're a parent with your smartphone and you're clicking those pictures, make sure to tag us so that we can uh, gather those together and celebrate uh, our uh, pageant today. We also want to invite you to our fellowship time right after our service in the fellowship hall. Uh, Join us for uh, uh, some uh, cup of coffee, get some goodies, find yourself at a table, and uh, while you're back there, you can also uh, peruse the youth uh, silent auction every year at this time of year. They have uh, a series of baskets that you can uh, bid on. Uh, The bidding starts today, so uh, get your your bids in now. Uh, The bidding will end next Sunday at the start of worship, so I'm told as soon as I start talking, uh, not only will all of you fall asleep, but we will, I'm just kidding, uh, as soon as I start the announcements, the uh, bidding will be closed and uh, you will uh, get your, uh, your final bids in in time to, to get what you'd like over there. So check that out. All those proceeds go to support our youth ministry here at the church. You can also uh, sign up to purchase a poinsettia to beautify our sanctuary. Uh, We'll be transforming our sanctuary back into its usual look, but it's going to have uh, all of those beautiful uh, poinsettias as we prepare for uh, Christmas Eve uh, next week. Uh, So if you would like to uh, purchase a poinsettia in honor or in memory of somebody in your life, uh, find the table in the fellowship hall while you're back there and and sign up to, uh, um, to purchase one of those poinsettias and help us out. We uh, are constantly uh, growing as disciples, as we uh, gather for worship, yes, but also as we uh, move from this place into other places, we, we gather uh, in Bible study and in Sunday school, we gather in prayer groups and uh, all kinds of different events throughout the uh, weeks and months and years, but uh, we want to encourage you to constantly grow as a disciple in Jesus Christ, and one of the best ways is for you to find yourself into a Sunday school class. We've got uh, three of them going right now. Uh, and uh, my class is, is continuing our uh, prayerful uh, preparation for Christmas. And so if you want to join me for that, we've also got God-given gifts and the Seekers class, uh, lots of opportunities. We also have Bible studies and prayer groups throughout uh, the week. And uh, just a reminder for all those who have been, uh, who have been working through the prophets with me uh, this uh, 2015, we've been working on all of the prophets of the Old Testament. We're concluding our study of the prophets uh, on Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock with uh, the book of Daniel. So if you want to join us for that, it's never too late. We're just getting up to start a new series uh, in January on the gospel. So if you haven't been a part of us and you're thinking it would really be nice to dig into God's word, uh, find yourself into a Bible study. We'd love to have you and, and uh, invite you into an encounter with God in in the Holy Scriptures. So find those ways. We also, uh, when you're uh, back uh, in Fellowship Hall, you might be reminded that uh, we do our angel tree ministry. If you have been one of those uh, uh, people who have taken one of the uh, angels and are purchasing gifts for children in our community, you want to make sure that we have those back next Sunday uh, so that we can wrap them. If you are an expert wrapper or uh, you have a heart for delivering those uh, those packages. If you haven't worn yourself out, you know, wrapping presents, we'd love to have you help us wrap all those gifts, and then we also need help delivering those to the children uh, that they're intended for. So if you would uh, be willing to wrap or deliver or both, uh, just uh, plan to uh, stick around after the service next Sunday and help us with, uh, with that. We also uh, are so excited. It's just such a great time of year to be worshiping. And next week, we have another special service. Uh, our choir has been working all f- uh, the entire fall on uh, the choir's cantata. 
It's going to be beautiful. We, it's really starting to come together as we were rehearsing it uh, last Tuesday. So we're very excited about the choir cantata. You want to check that out. And uh, we have a very special service next Sunday evening at 7 o'clock uh, called the Blue Christmas Service. If you're not familiar with the Blue Christmas Service, uh, there are uh, folks among us, maybe it's even you, uh, having a little hard time getting into the Christmas spirit. Maybe you're uh, feeling a little down. Maybe you're uh, missing that somebody that you lost this year. Maybe you're missing that somebody that's no longer there. Maybe you lost a job. Whatever it might be that's keeping you, keeping you down this Christmas, uh, the Blue Christmas Service is a way for us to, uh, to worship and celebrate the birth of Christ even when you don't quite feel like celebrating. It's just a marvelous time of prayer and communion and, uh, and just a holy time. Seven o'clock uh, next Sunday in the evening, we'd love to have you join us for that as well. Uh, if you can. And of course, we want to remind you uh, that uh, Christmas Eve will be right here at 5 and 7 o'clock uh, for our Christmas Eve candlelight services. Uh, those are such a marvelous time. The, the Jackson family will be back uh, to bless us with their presence. The choir is singing, and of course, we'll have carols and a, and a message and candles and the whole bit. It's a beautiful, beautiful service, and I want to invite you for our candlelight service. If you're going to be in town, we'd love to have you. Uh, and maybe you're wondering how you're going to remember all of these uh, special events and dates. If you look on the back of your bulletin, you'll see a little box there that says Christmas season events. And all of the things I just rattled off are right there. Uh, all of the special services and all of the uh, extra things we have going on. And you might notice that it looks an awful lot like the little page that's inserted in your bulletin. I have a challenge for you. I have a challenge for you. Are you ready? Are you up to the challenge? This is the interactive portion of the announcements. Are you up to the challenge? Yes. Fantastic. So here's, here's the challenge. You've got your bulletin. You can take that home. That'll remind you of all that stuff. You can put it in your uh, smartphone if you want or write it down on your uh, uh, iPad, right, Les? you got your, uh, your notepad, whatever you do to keep track of those things, right? But you have this little guy here. You can take this out into your everyday life, give it to a coworker, give it to a friend, give it to a family member, Invite them to join you in worshiping uh, our Lord at this blessed time of year uh, here at Brighton United Methodist Church. We encourage you to, uh, to find somebody, maybe you even bump into somebody on the bus and say, you know what, you got a place to worship on Christmas Eve, this is the place for you. Uh, come and join us. We'd love to have you do that and help us get the word out. With that, let us greet each other in the peace and love of Christ as we begin our worship service this morning.
and join with me, if you will, in our call to worship printed in your bulletin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us prepare to receive the gift of God this Advent. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we come to you today. We are filled with your Holy Spirit, Lord. We come to this place that we might worship you, that we might truly adore you, that we might give you glory for our living. We come that we might see your face in the face of the beautiful and wonderful children of this church. We come that we might hear your good news in a new way. May that blessed news fall upon our hearts and warm them. May it come into our minds and inspire them. May it take grip in our lives and transform us to your glory, that we might usher your kingdom in. Lord, bless this time of worship. Bless the children and the youth and the adults who have worked with them, that we might truly give you glory today and always. In Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. been hearing from uh, different people throughout this Advent season as we uh, come to lighting our Advent wreath. And I'm going to call back to the folks who are hurting the children and have them send up the Hicks girls real quick. They'll be on their way. We were trying to decide who I would invite for uh, this Sunday, as we, of course, have most of our uh, stuff out of the way. Uh, but, of course, we have our, our Advent wreath tucked over here by our, our uh, Christmas tree. And I started thinking about uh, all of those wonderful conversations that I get to have with the kids up here, usually. Come on up, girls. All those times that I get to have these great conversations with these kiddos, and sometimes I wish they all had microphones so you could hear them all. Uh, but I started thinking about who could share with us about what it meant uh, to know Jesus uh, on this Sunday as we celebrated our youth and our children. And uh, these two automatically came to mind. So you guys are going to help me, right? All right, so I'm just going to ask them a question, and we'll see, how they, we'll see how this goes, all right? So what does it mean for you guys to know Jesus? Well, it means, like, he's our Savior, and he protects us, and he saved us for um, just to love us, care for us. He's like our helper when he helps us, and we, I believe that everyone should love him. Amen. It doesn't get much better than that, does it? Can you guys help me? All right. All right. We have two purples and a pink. There you go. All right, you want to do the pink one? Right back over here. Perfect. Thank you, guys. All right, we'll let you guys go get back ready, okay?
we have whew, we have such a great opportunity to uh, serve our Lord in so many ways in this uh, in this day. You'll see so many uh, parents and grandparents and adults who have been working so hard at at uh, pinning costumes so that they fit your kids, uh, so uh, uh, making PowerPoint, uh, photocopying scripts, rehearsing with the youth and the kids, and uh, so much goes into this. There's also so many different ways that you can serve, uh, not just with our kids, but in so many different ways. As you grow as a disciple and are inspired to serve and, and grow in your ministry, uh, in your ministry here with us. One of the most They're, they're stealing Jesus. <laughs> I love it. There are so many ways for us to, uh, to give back to the Lord, and one of them is for us to give our, uh, our gifts to the ministries of this congregation, the ministries of God uh, that we try to uh, steward here at Brighton United Methodist Church. And so it is uh, inspired by our young people and all that they give to us that we give what God has given that uh, his ministry might continue. So let us take our morning offering.
Weren't those kids great? Let's hear it for the kids. Give them a, give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Boy, kids, that was just super. You guys did a fabulous Christmas presentation. I'm so glad. Thank you so much for coming. But we're not finished yet. That was just our first song. And we haven't even gotten to the speaking parts yet. I'm one of the narratress, narratra, narratress, s, 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 the girl narrators. There you go. <laughs> I'm sorry, kids. Since the Christmas musicals, they, they always end with everybody around the manger. I just assumed that you guys were done. It would be the end, but if we are doing a regular Christmas musical, but this is Christmas in reverse. <laughs> Christmas in reverse? No, 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 wait. I, I get it. That would be, um, that would be Mast Chris. No, no. no. Oh, maybe it's spelled backwards. What would that be? Um, uh, Sam Sirk. Not the word Christmas backwards, but the story of Christmas in reverse. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what I, I don't get it. Then let us demonstrate. with nothing left but Jesus in the manger. What did Jesus, what, but why did Jesus come here in the first place? Why do we even need Christmas? To understand that, let's rewind again and go back to where everything started, the most beautiful place on earth, the Garden of Eden. Jacks? Mm. 
but could you make some Snapple to wet my Adam's apple? <laughs> you get, get it? It's Adam's apple? <laughs> I'm the funniest guy on the planet. Adam, you're the only guy on the planet. Now, let's get to picking. But of all these trees in the garden, God told us not to eat any of these ones. Well, when someone tells you not to do something, what do you naturally want to do? Sure. Besides, God's not watching. Who's gonna know? Take a bite. Mm, it does taste like a wine sap. <laughs> now, doing what God tells us not to do is called sin. And since God is always with us, He knows everything, just as He knew Adam and Eve had sinned. We don't know how long Adam and Eve had been in the garden, but we do know that until this time they had always obeyed God. But when Adam and Eve sinned... the garden became a place where God no longer could live. Aww. So as Adam and Eve... No, so... So has the angels in heaven watched Adam and Eve leave the garden in shame, what do you think they might have said? children and grandchildren and great grandchildren but no one ha but no one worshiped God until Noah so God told Noah to build a big boat and fill it with animals of every kind then Noah invited everyone to join him on the boat but the people just laughed and walked away
you know, the very last prophet, Malachi, God was silent. There was no more prophets, no more words of hope, no more promises of a savior. Time passed slowly, one year, 10 years, 100 years, and then 400 years. And what about the people who loved God and prayed for his return? They all could, all they could do was wait. to earth again. But instead of appearing in the clouds as a mighty king, God came as a man, as any man comes to earth, born of a mother, a mother named Mary. Here's how it happened. The angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and said, And Mary replied, Oh, how I love the Lord that he would notice even a simple girl like me. The Lord has done so much for me, just as he does wonderful things for everyone who serves him. Mary was the most blessed of all women. Not because she was perfect, but because she was the perfect mother to take care of God's son. Mary loved God, trusted him, and trusted his plan for her life.
Joseph, son of David, a young girl will give birth to God's son. He will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. That girl is Mary, so take care of her. So take care of her and your wife, and help Mary raise the holy child. Since Joseph was a godly man, he obeyed the angel and trusted God's plan for his life. Jesus was God's gift to a wonderful filled with, with sinful people. But because Jesus was God, God with us, he alone had the power to give us our sin. And all of the people who lived at the time who would be the first to hear the news of Jesus' birth. Hype down out there. Hype down out there. Yeah, we see you.
found Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus lying in a manger. The stable was probably quiet, except for the noise of the rustling hay or the animals nearby. But as the shepherds knelt before the Christ child, the sound of the angel choirs who had brought such good news must have been ringing in their ears. And in any language, their message was awesome. A savior is born for you. The shepherds would leave to tell their friends that their waiting was over. God's own son had been born this first Christmas. But others would come to worship the Savior, like the wise men, who after months of following the star, found the newborn king. And when they found Jesus, they said... We have seen a star, and we have come from the east to worship it.
those who come to Jesus, and then for those who come to Him now. For those who come to Jesus, then for those who come to Him now. There is great joy to know that God came to be with us. But as but as we look at Christmas in reverse, we see that God has always been with Jesus been with us. It always loved and always has a plan for our lives. And even though we weren't able to worship at the major, we can still honor him today. Give Jesus our love. Give him our life. Give him our heart. If you've been inspired by uh, our kids up here, and how could you not be inspired by our kids? If you were uh, inspired to uh, dedicate your life or rededicate your life to Christ and welcome uh, the Christ child into your heart, we want to, uh, we'll repeat that uh, last song, and we would love to have you come down and let uh, the kids and I pray with you uh, as you do that. So if you'd come, great. If not, we'll pray with all of you. Go ahead. I don't think so. But everybody's back at the manger. The innkeeper, the angels, the shepherds, the wise men, Mary and Joseph. We've told the whole Christmas story plus the story behind Christmas. Yes, but you're still not finished. So what's, so what's left? left? The praise, the applause, the good news that God his, sent his son to this stinky, smelly earth to welcome <laughs> to welcome us there. So I'd have to say, we've got something to shout about, right? Yeah. All right.
do you finish after that? <laughs> I want to invite us to uh, stand, enjoy, and join in our uh, choral benediction as we close our service today. Go into this world with your spirits lifted, with faith like a child, to share the good news and shout out, Emmanuel, God is with us. Go in the name of God, who is Father and Mother, Son and Spirit. Go in peace. You are loved. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Patrick. <laughs>